Just a few weeks ago, we saw the long dead GPT-4 hype come back to life with a new GPT-4V, which not only can see, hear, but also speak. On top of that, the OpenAI's image generator Dolly 3 being revived out of nowhere made me start to believe that LK99 might as well be real. So what's next? The metaverse? After Zuck the Lizardman got roasted for dumping an insane amount of money on a project that looked like they're remaking Wii avatars, this is the metaverse now. Feels old yet? If you haven't seen the recent Lex Friedman video, he interviewed Zuck for the third time, but this time with a little bit of a twist. Interviewed in a virtual reality. And it just looked like the scene from The Matrix. Demoing what is perhaps Meadow's first big step towards bringing Metaverse into reality, and really looking like they finally are getting somewhere. Except they probably need something to generate realistic 3D environments, like Nerf or what is this? 3D? The Gaussian splatting? 50 times faster than Nerf's state of the R? What? 3DGS, short for 3D Gaussian splatting, released only a few months ago, might have just replaced Nerf in rendering 3D scenes from 2D images. This resurfaced technique that does not rely on neural networks has just blown the whole field away, not only with its superior optimization time, but also its real time rendering quality. Yes, you heard it right. You get an insane amount of FPS in real time while browsing through the extreme detailed 3D render. Instant NGP does not even come close to the FPS and the quality it has. 3D GS might just be like the next diffusion model that jumpstarted the photorealistic image generation field by replacing GANs, as 3D Gaussian and diffusion were pre-existing concepts but reproposed with the addition of some newer techniques. So is it really time to say goodbye to nerfs? Well, let's discuss how they actually work first before you start to believe my unhinged AI bro statements. For a quick and dirty explanation, nerfs are basically ray tracers, and 3DGS is a rasterizer. For an actual explanation, both start with using a photogrammetry technique called structure from motion to determine the positions of your images based on your camera's point of view. It then outputs this sparse point cloud for you to work with. For processing with Nerve, it can basically be broken down into three main steps. First, marching the camera rays through the scene and collecting the simple points on the way back. Then it projects these points to a high dimensional space, which basically encodes the information so the neural network can process them more efficiently. Then finally, these points are used as the input for the neural network and it will generate the RGB intensity value for the input points, which if you put them all together and convert it into pixels, you would then be able to see the object. The only AI part, which is also the slowest part in Nerf, is just the neural network repeatedly comparing the AI generated RGB plus the density points against the ground truth POV. So when you're rendering the view while training, you get to see this unblurring effect, which is a common view when you use instant and GP. There are other methods evolved to solve the speed issue, like smaller or better MLP representation in the hash grid, which is used in instant NGP, or completely dropping the AI component and use a sparse voxel grid to interpolate the density field, like what you see in Planoxels. But most of the time, these have trade offs with quality, so might not be an ideal solution. 3D Gaussian, on the other hand, creates these three dimensional Gaussian volumetric splat on top of those sparse point clouds, and it contains information like position, covariance matrix, and and opacity to model the scene, and it uses this tile-based rasterizer to render and optimize the 3D Gaussian with speed that is FAST AS FUCK BOY! And instead of having an AI coloring the scene for you, it stores the spherical harmonics within the 3D Gaussians to represent the colors. This then saves tons of time and resources while being able to generate quality that is comparable or even better than MIP Nerf 360, which is the current state of the art in terms of quality while taking only 1 50th of its training time. On the official 3D GS paper, the PSNR is lower than MIP Nerf 360, but the official result definitely look a lot cleaner than MIP. Like for this bike, the thin metal rods on the wheels are so much cleaner, along with finer details of the grass and the tree branches. It is just obviously a big step up. From what I've seen on the internet, not only is the speed comparable to instant NGP, but the quality is just miles ahead. With details that can be as small as eyelashes, hair strands, or details for scenes as big as a factory, with super good water reflections, 3D Gaussian splatting has got it for you. A few people even made some pretty cool effects like Gaussian unsplatting where the scene just falls apart, burning Gaussian splatting where the scene just burns in and out, or an effect that looks like the scene got deleted by Thanos. Very impressive, right? And an important takeaway here, quoting from the original Nerf author, is that 3D Gaussian splatting is not just a Nerf where the MLP has been replaced by a set of Gaussians, but the part where 3D GS is using rasterization instead of ray tracing, which is a pretty important point that a lot of people missed. Anyways, not only is the processing much faster,
faster, the whole research field decided to go speedy too. Just after one and a half months, we got not one, but two new 3D Gaussian based Texas 3D research. One is called Dream Gaussian and the other is called Texas 3D Gaussian Splatting. They look on par with some of the latest Nerf or Diffusion based Texas 3D. And while the technique may look pretty transferable, it is still pretty impressive that someone has already coded, trained, written a research paper in this short amount of time. On top of that, a dynamic Gaussian research was published 15 days ago where it can render a 3D scene over time. I don't know if it's the same research, but someone even threw it into a VR and viewed the scene in real time, with 2K resolution and 250 FPS. While its quality may not be comparable with dynamic nerves, it is still pretty exciting to see the field has a lot more room to grow and not necessarily sit in stone like how Diffusion is now much preferred than Gens for image generation. There are a lot of fake AI services like this AI company that raised 1.5 million turns out to have been using humans to make 3D models instead of AIs. So let me just quickly point you to a few legit services that have 3DGS implemented right now. The first one is Polycam. I only came across it when 3D Gaussian was announced on their app. They are the first ones to include it in their services, so they get to be the first one on the list, I guess. They also stated that the processing cost is free, so who knows, you can go try it out now. The second one is Luma AI, which I mentioned previously because they have some good tools in using Nerf to generate 3D scenes with lots of other functions like exporting to Blender. Oh yeah, I'm not sponsored by any of them, by the way. So if you do want to play around with 3D Gaussian splatting while not having to bang your head against the table, to figure out how to build the codes yourself, definitely check out their services. But if you do choose to suffer through the hellish landscape that is installing it locally, I do have this tutorial which my team at ByteCloud AI made to maybe reduce your pain and suffering down to just a few clicks and copy and paste. It takes around an hour training time for a scene on the 3090 and requires 24 VRAM. So if your GPU is not strong enough, maybe Luma AI or Polycam would be a better choice. And if this topic interests you and motivates you to start learning AI or machine learning in general, Today's sponsor, Brilliant, is actually one of the best places to get started. Brilliant is an online learning platform that is basically when your textbooks become alive. It provides a way for you to learn interactively with Brilliant's fun hands-on lessons in math, science, and computer science. Research has shown that interactive learning helps you learn six times more efficiently than watching lecture videos, and I totally agree with that. Interactive lessons not only help you visualize problems much quicker, but also are able to illustrate very difficult concepts for you to comprehend faster which is what plain textbook or YouTube videos cannot help you with. Back in my high school days, I actually used Brilliant along with my calculus class because it was much easier to understand what calculus is on about while you are being freshly introduced to a new field of maths. Brilliant not only have very helpful diagrams for you, but also interactive elements that actually help my understanding much faster than learning the fundamental theorem of calculus through a wordy mathematical definition inside a boring textbook. Not only that, Brilliant also provides a clear roadmap on different subjects for all knowledge levels. From basic algebra to advanced multivariable calculus, from programming with Python to artificial neural networks, Brilliant is full of STEM classes that are usually a pain to study in, but made into a much friendlier and digestible format. So yeah, you can quickly get started on Brilliant by heading to brilliant.org slash to get started for free with Brilliant's ever-expanding interactive lessons and to also support this channel. The first 200 of y'all will also get a 20% off an annual membership. Shout out to all my Patreons, Andrew Laschelius, Alex J, Crystal Du, Alex Maries, Mig Willem, Deegan, Fefal, Daddy Wen, and many others. Y'all have made me able to pay for many of my cloud services I use instead of just taking out of my own pocket. So thank you guys again. And yeah, I guess that's it. I will see y'all in the next one.